Well, thank you everybody for attending. Uh, we're going to change a bit of topic. We're going to talk about agriculture. So I'm Virginie Bonfort. I'm a data scientist at Hummingbird. We are a London-based startup, mainly trying to provide AI solution for agriculture. So a mission. Well, a mission is quite simple. We are using essentially satellite and drone imagery to help farmers protect and increase yield while being more sustainable. And we try to help farmers optimize inputs, so spend less chemical or optimize where they want to spend chemicals or water and make earlier and better, and better decision. So how we do this? So we are doing this through, through many platforms. One of them might be just using ima satellite images. Another one might be to use plain images or drone images, and maybe in the future robots directly in the fields. And those images are uploaded through the, through the platforms. Then we cre create different products out of them. Sorry for the one in the background. You can struggle following my slides. And, and then we provide this, I would say, kind of insight to the farmers through either the computer and they can plug directly a solution in the tractors, irrigators, or just take decision. Well, we have two main analytics frameworks, two main big analytics frameworks. So one is to give to farmers very personalized analysis about what's going on inside their field. And to do so, we will probably use drone or airplanes, which will give you an image resolution of about centimeter to millimeter. And we are mainly targeting farm managers for those kind of application. But we are also sometimes stepping back a bit from the field view and we want to have a better overview of what's going on in the farm, what's going on in the region, continent. And to do so, we will use satellite, which give meters resolution most of the time. And to provide understanding, a macroscopic understanding of what's going on. Is the season going well when people are going <coughs> to harvest, for example, corn, stuff like this. And we are mainly targeting government, very large corporations for this kind of application. So let's talk about one of our applications at a field scale, let's say. And I'm going to talk about plant counting. So plant counting, is it actually useful? Because growers know exactly how many seeds they planted. So you could think, well, useless. Well, it's not, because it's not because you seeded something that the plant's going to survive through a season, which means that you're a bit blind in terms of how many plants you will be able to harvest. And we provide this solution. We are able to plant count just before harvest so you can make better decision. So here is a um, lettuce field, as you can see, and some workers. And by providing them plant counting, we can optimize the supply, the supply chain channel management. So let me explain. For example, if a gr grower say he will deliver, I don't know, 100 plants to a supplier and he has only 80 at the end of the season, you will have to buy 20 from probably Spain to fit this demand. If, in, if instead he said he, he will have 100, but he produced 120, he has 20 more and he need to find another buyer. And we are here to give them a bit more time to take better decision. And also to reduce water and chemicals use. So by default, the tractor will apply the same rate everywhere, but it's not true. Maybe one part of your field is actually unplanted. A deer came and eat a lot of them. So by using an application, you can reduce water and chemical, only target where you need them. So how does it look from a drone? How does it look like? So here you can see a lettuce field. You have some black lettuces, some green lettuces, and this is roughly the view that we have from a drone. Um, you, you have here some like a, a zoom in of the field where you can see you have like thousands of points. One point means one lettuce. And here you have another zoom where you can see more in detail each and every single lettuce. So this kind of problem is not, I would say, a problem you will face in the street counting the number of cows, for example, but rather a problem that you can eventually find in another area, for example, medicine, when doctors are trying to count the number of cells in a human body. You have millions of objects in the image you're looking. So why should we use deep learning to solve this problem? 
Well, deep learning are well known to be state of the art for computer vision, but they are really robust for different scenarios. So for example, so on this on this image you can see that you have wet and wet and dry soil. So you have a different background. You may have the same lettuces with a different background. In Brazil, for example, the soil is orange, while in the UK it's brown. So you need to train your algorithm to work with different backgrounds. You may have weeds, you may have black lettuces, green lettuces, different shapes. And deep learning will help have a robust solution to all these problems. The other thing is transferability. Well, you've learned, for example, how to plant count lettuces. Can we go and start to talk about cauliflower growers? Would that work? Do we need to start from scratch again? Well, no, you can use the algorithm and the weights from the lettuce algorithm to actually just fine tune what you need for the cauliflowers. And the speed, automated solution, no human interaction. And for those who are really into deep learning computer vision, inference can be quicker than standard computer vision methods. There are, uh, there are some cons. Uh, we are pioneer in our industry, which means there is no public data set. We need to create everything ourselves. And it's really labor intensive, as you can imagine, millions of plants in the field. And also the infrastructure is quite costly because you need CPUs and GPUs. Well, these are three of the solutions we have been developing um, with complexity come value. So I want to present the three solutions. So the first one on your life, left is you give an image and you just want to know the number of plants you have in this image. So it's a regression problem. Here you have 34 plants. You can try to count them or just believe me. Um, and this is, the, I would say, the first one that we've tried. Then we went for object detection, so the second one. Here we're going to try to detect the location of the plants. This is really useful, especially if you want to apply different rates of chemical inside your field. You need to know where they are. And increase complexity, but increase the value for the farmer. And you have the last one, which is semantic segmentation. So you know exactly where are the plants and how they look like, how big they are. And this can be used to monitor the health of every single plant in your field. But it's really complex. <coughs> so that's it. And now I'm going to talk about the regional scale analysis, crop type classification. We're going to take a step back. We've been very, very zoom. We had very zoom in into the field, but now let's talk about what about at a regional scale? You wouldn't have enough pilots and of drone suppliers to actually do this kind of thing for like, let's say, go and, and fly all the fields in UK. So you need to use satellite data. And I'm going to talk about crop classification through satellite data. So crop classification, what is it used for? Was it, is it actually useful? So is it, it's useful to do some regional benchmarking. For example, if you want to know how the season is doing for crop, if, you're gonna, if you think that the harvesting is going to happen soon or not. And to do so, you need to know actually what is inside this field. Is it carrots or is it potatoes? Is it maize? And this is really useful for this kind of application. And it's also useful for fraud detection. So as you know, farmers, when they grow a given type of crop, they receive subvention. And we need to make sure that they are actually growing what they are claiming. So here you have a, a map that we've produced where um, one of our clients gave us like boundaries in Ukraine. They wanted to know what, what, the, what they were growing in those kind of areas. And each color represents a different crop. And this is the kind of output we've been given to the client. So <clears throat> as I told you, you need um, satellite images to do this kind of thing, so I'm going to try to go slowly on, on this slide. So the input is, you have a time series of satellite data. So here you can see a wheat field uh, in April, another one in June, the same field but a satellite image from June, and another one from July. So green represents healthier, more dense, the, the more red it represents a, a plant which is dying, or which is less dense, so it could be soil. And as the spring goes, the plant is essentially becoming uh, yellow, 
because it's the wheat, so it's coming from green to yellow. So this is like a, a pattern that the wheat has. And if I give you this like time series of images, I want as an output the crop which is growing in this field. So you can go really heavy right now. You can try to classify this as a frame, as a video. But doing this, well, Google is doing it. YouTube is doing it. We don't have the data for this. It requires millions and millions of annotation. So we've been um, taking this, this problem and we've been changing it a, bit, a little bit. So I'm going to take about crop classification. We are solving it currently with recurrent neural networks based solutions. So recur recurrent neural networks are a type of machine learning architecture which has, which, how is it? Which remember not only the current state of the, of the, of the input, but also have a memory. Which means that if I give you, if I come back to this slide, for example, if it looks at this image, it also remember that it was like this and like this before. And instead of taking the image, we've taken some important features from, from, the, from the image, and we've been trying to classify this as a, like as a, as a curve, like you would do in finance, for example, to predicting stocks. And here you have the dates, and here you have, uh, for example, a metric a feature, and you have different crop. And you can see that at some point in the season, like here, the crop looks similar, but at some other point of the season, some of them will start to differentiate from others, like here the blue one and here the green one. And if you give this kind of like time series to your algorithm, your algorithm will start understanding the pattern and it will be able to classify it. And what we've been finding is that each crop have a distant spectral signature through the growing season. So at a given time, you might not be able to tell the difference between two, but if you give all the, all the time step, it will. And so far we have been able, so this is the week of the year and I would say performances. And the more, the more we advance in the season and the better we are at predicting crops, which I would have expected. And essentially two months before harvest, we are over 90% accuracy, accurate at predicting those crops, which might help as well, a lot of people. Um, so in summary, the, I would say the takeaways from my talk is that remote sensing and artific artificial intelligence are helping to feed the world, growing population, but as well as trying to be as sustainable as we can. Let's not put chemicals when we don't need them. Let's not use the water when we don't need it. And machine learning has been applied to different scale. It's working. We are creating other applications. And as I told you, we are pioneer. It's a new, brand new industry, and there are many more products in our pipeline which are gonna come out. So watch this space. And thank you guys. 